This video is a short extract from our course on concrete construction cost estimating. In our full course, we go into everything that's required to accurately calculate the cost of concrete construction works. From understanding the different methodologies, accurately measuring quantities, estimating productivities and more. As a construction cost estimator or quantity surveyor, we don't want to just be limited to entering numbers into a spreadsheet. We need to be able to understand the works and what we are pricing. If we are estimating the costs of constructing a concrete slab, we need to properly understand and appreciate what's required from start to finish to turn the drawings and specifications into a finished product. Only by understanding the construction methodology can we accurately calculate costs. In this section, we are going to start by looking at the basics of concrete what it is and why it's used, the main types of concrete structures, the typical design drawings and requirements, and the key activities in concrete construction. Let's start with the absolute basics. Concrete is a versatile construction material composed of a mixture of cement, aggregates such as sand, gravel, or crushed stone, water, and often supplementary materials like admixtures and additives. Cement, a fine powder, acts as the binding agent in concrete, creating a solid and durable matrix when mixed with water and aggregates. The aggregates in concrete provide bulk and strength to the mixture. The combination of cement and aggregates creates a robust composite material. Water is essential in the concrete mix as it initiates the chemical reaction known as hydration, causing the cement to harden and gain strength over time. Concrete can be poured and moulded into various shapes and forms, making it adaptable for a wide range of construction applications. It is widely used in the construction industry for building foundations, walls, columns, beams, slabs, pavements, bridges, dams and many other structures. Concrete is favoured for its strength, durability and load-bearing capacity, making it suitable for supporting heavy loads and enduring various environmental conditions. It provides excellent fire resistance, making it a safe choice for structures in high-risk fire areas. Due to its cost-effectiveness and widespread availability of raw materials, concrete remains a cost-efficient construction option across the world. There are lots of different types of concrete. These include ordinary Portland cement concrete. This is the most common type of concrete used in general construction. OPC is made from a mixture of cement, aggregates, water and sometimes admixtures. It is suitable for various applications, including foundations, slabs and beams. It can either be mixed on-site or come directly from a batching plant. Reinforced concrete. Reinforced concrete includes steel reinforcement bars, rebars, embedded within the concrete to enhance its tensile strength and improve its resistance to cracking and structural integrity. It is widely used in structural elements such as columns, beams and bridges. Pre-cast concrete is manufactured off-site in controlled conditions, cast into various shapes and cured before being transported to the construction site for installation. It offers high quality and consistent products, reducing on-site labour and construction time. Pre-cast concrete elements include wall panels, beams, columns, stairs and other structural components. Pre-stressed concrete. Pre-stressed concrete is similar to reinforced concrete but is pre-compressed during the manufacturing process to counteract potential tensile stresses. This type of concrete is used in structures requiring high load carrying capacities such as bridges and long span structures. And shotcrete or sprayed concrete. Shotcrete is a method of applying concrete pneumatically through a hose onto a surface. It is commonly used for repairing and strengthening existing structures such as tunnels and retaining walls. There are lots of other types and classifications too, but these are the basic ones. The main types of concrete structures you will hear discussed are concrete slabs, which are flat horizontal surfaces used for floors, pavements and foundations. Types include suspended slabs, ground supported slabs and elevated slabs. Concrete walls, which are vertical barriers used to enclose and partition spaces in buildings and other structures. Types include load bearing walls, shear walls, retaining walls and basement walls. Concrete beams, which are horizontal or inclined structural elements that support the load from slabs and floors often used in conjunction with columns to form the framework of a structure. Concrete columns, which are vertical load-bearing members that transfer loads from beams to the foundation, can be circular, square or rectangular in shape. Concrete piers and pilings, which are vertical structural elements designed to transfer loads deep into the ground, used to support bridges, piers and other structures in areas with poor soil conditions. And concrete culverts, which are tunnel-like structures used to convey water or other fluids beneath roads or railways. They can be pre-cast or cast in place. 
If you Google search any of those terms, you will find some useful images and diagrams. Next, we'll quickly go through concrete designs. These are the reference drawings and specifications that we will use to complete any construction works. Ultimately, when estimating concrete construction costs, the drawings and specifications are what we are going to be referring to. The elements of a concrete design that we are going to be referring to are the structural drawings, section views, concrete mix design, reinforcement design, construction joint design, general notes, specifications and some other important drawings. The first element of the concrete design will be the general structural drawings. These will give a detailed overview of the slab dimensions, including length, width and depths, as well as the general orientation. The structural drawings show the size and orientation of the slab and are useful for understanding the general requirements and overall quantities of work. Section views are used to provide further clarification to the general structural drawings. Section views are used when additional details are required that cannot be easily shown in the overall drawings. For example, in the section view shown on screen, detail is shown on how to fix the steel base plates to the ring beam. A concrete mix design is the process of selecting the proportions of the main components of concrete, cement, aggregates, water, and sometimes admixtures to achieve the desired properties for a specific construction project. It is a critical step in concrete production as it determines the strength, durability, workability, and other performance characteristics of the resulting concrete. The concrete mix design aims to create a concrete mix that meets the project's requirements while considering factors such as strength requirements, the desired compressive strength of the concrete, which depends on the type of structure and its load-bearing capacity. Durability. Concrete should resist environmental conditions, chemical attacks and deterioration over time. Workability. The ease with which concrete can be mixed, placed, compacted and finished during construction. Permeability. The resistance of concrete to the penetration of water and other substances. Exposure conditions. Consideration of the environmental conditions that concrete will encounter, such as temperature, moisture and aggressive agents. Aggregate gradation. The distribution of different sizes of aggregates in the mix, affecting concrete's workability and strength, and cement type. Selection of the appropriate cement type based on project requirements. For example, the project specifications may require a compressive strength of 28 MPa, a maximum aggregate size of 20 mm, and mild exposure conditions. This would lead to a mixed design of cement of 400 kg per meter cubed, water of 200 kg per meter cubed, coarse aggregate of 1200 kg per meter cubed. 60% of total volume, fine aggregate of 800 kg per meter cubed, 40% of total volume, and no admixture. A concrete reinforcement design, also known as a reinforcement detailing, or reinforcement schedule, provides detailed information about the arrangement, size, and quantity of steel reinforcement to be used in a concrete structure. It is a crucial part of the construction drawings and is prepared by structural engineers to ensure that the concrete elements can withstand the applied loads and maintain structural integrity. The concrete reinforcement design includes the following details. Rebar placement specifies the location and arrangement of reinforcement bars within the concrete element such as beams, columns, slabs and walls. Rebar size and spacing specifies the diameter and spacing of the rebars to ensure adequate structural strength and load carrying capacity. Rebar cover indicates the minimum distance between the surface of the concrete and the outermost layers of rebars. This cover protects the reinforcement from corrosion and ensures its bond with concrete. Bending and curving details provides instructions on how to bend or curve the rebars to accommodate the structural shape and design requirements. Lap length specifies the minimum overlapping length required for connecting two rebars to ensure continuous load transfer across the splice. Stirrups and ties specifies the size, spacing and configuration of stirrups or ties used to prevent shear failure and improve overall structural performance. Reinforcement splices provides details on how the rebars are to be connected at various points to maintain continuity and structural integrity. Reinforcement hooks specifies the angle and dimensions of hooked ends of rebars to, to enhance anchorage. Special reinforcement details provides details for any special reinforcement requirements, such as in seismic design or specific construction scenarios. And then reinforcement schedules summarizes the quantity and type of rebars used in each structural element and provides a clear list of all the required reinforcement for the entire project. A construction joint design refers to the plan layout and arrangement of joints in a concrete structure to control cracking and accommodate movement caused by temperature changes, shrinkage or other factors. Joints are intentionally created planes or gaps in the concrete to allow for controlled cracking and to prevent uncontrolled cracking, which could lead to structural issues and aesthetic concerns. The design shows joint locations on the structure. These locations are strategically chosen to allow for controlled cracking and to minimize the impact on the structure's appearance and performance. 
The design specifies the type of joints to be used, such as sawn joints, form joints, keyway joints, or construction joints with dowels or reinforcement bars. The spacing between joints, which is crucial for controlling the size and spacing of cracks and preventing random cracking. The depth to which the joint is formed, ensuring that it extends through the entire thickness of the concrete element. For form joints, the design specifies the width of the joint to allow for movement while maintaining the structural integrity of the concrete. And in some cases, the design may include specifications for joint sealant materials to be used to fill the joint gaps after construction to prevent the ingress of water and debris. And finally, construction general notes and specifications on engineering drawings provide essential information and instructions to contractors, construction teams and other stakeholders involved in the construction process. These notes and specifications accompany the detailed drawings and serve as a comprehensive guide to ensure that the construction is carried out correctly and in accordance with the design intent. The general notes and specifications typically include the following. Project information. Details about the project, including the project title, location, client information, project number, and the drawing revision history. Scope of work. A clear description of the scope of work to be performed, including the type of construction, materials to be used, and any specific construction methods required. Codes and standards. References to relevant building codes, engineering standards, and industry regulations that must be followed during construction. Quality assurance and control. Requirements for quality assurance and control processes to ensure that construction meets the specified standards and design intent. Materials. Specifications for the types and grades of materials to be used, such as concrete mixes, steel reinforcement and other construction materials. Construction tolerances. Tolerances for dimensional accuracy and alignment, ensuring that construction meets the required precision. Construction methods. Instructions on specific construction methods, procedures and techniques to be used during the construction process. Inspection and testing. Procedures for inspection and testing of materials and construction elements to verify compliance with specifications. As-built documentation. Instructions for preparing and submitting as-built drawings and documentation to reflect the actual construction details. And special considerations. Any special considerations, limitations or conditions unique to the project. Construction general notes and specifications are crucial for ensuring that the construction process is well documented, standardised and in compliance with the project's design and regulatory requirements. They help maintain consistency and provide clear guidance throughout the construction phase, reducing the likelihood of errors, disputes and costly rework. Now we understand what concrete is, why it's used and the basics of the concrete design documents. Let's begin looking at concrete construction. This is the construction process we'll be calculating the costs of completing. Concrete construction is broken down into four steps. Pre-works and site preparation, which includes activities like excavation, survey setup, access setup and any prior activities that are needed to be completed. Preparation for the pour, which is where we erect formwork, the mould in which we pour the concrete and install any steel reinforcement and cast in items. Then the placement of concrete. And finally, once the concrete is cured, meaning it has dried to reach strength, the post-pour activities like surface treatment, saw cutting and the removal and stripping of the formwork. These activities are the activities we are going to now review in detail to ensure we properly understand what's involved in concrete construction works.